Welcome, students, to our first lecture in Chapter 4's installment of our never-ending series on general chemistry. Today, we're going to talk about reactions and aqueous solutions. <laughs> so after today's lecture, you should be able to define the terms solvent, solute, electrolyte, and non-electrolyte. Use the solubility rules from Table 4.1 to classify different compounds as being soluble or insoluble in water. Identify the precipitates that form in precipitation reactions and write a net ionic equation. Now if this begins to feel overwhelming, don't you worry. Voltron will save you. And by Voltron I mean lots of intense studying. All right, let's go by defining some terms. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. The substance present in the greatest amount is called the solvent, and the other substances are called solutes. They're said to be dissolved in the solvent. When a small amount of sodium chloride is dissolved in a large quantity of water, for example, water is the solvent and sodium chloride is the solute. Here's a picture that kind of shows that. We look at a solution of water in a flask in which we've dissolved sodium chloride, and we'll note that all of the sodium cations that each have a plus one charge separate out from the chloride anions which have a minus one charge. If we were able to zoom in really, really closely on this solution, we could see the individual sodium cations and chloride anions floating around with the water molecules clustering or caging around them. Thus, I want you to remember, solvent is the major component in a solution, and solute is the compound or compounds that are dissolved in the solvent. Now, a substance such as sodium chloride whose aqueous solutions contain ions is called an electrolyte. Now, a substance such as C12H22011 that does not form ions in solution is called a non-electrolyte. Let me explain that in some simpler terms. There are lots of compounds that will dissolve in water. Anytime a compound dissolves in water and separates out into a cation and an anion, or some number of cations and anions, such a substance is called an electrolyte. An example electrolyte is sodium chloride that we just saw. Substances that do dissolve in water but do not separate out into ions, such as table sugar, for example, are non-electrolytes. Now, because oxygen atoms in water have partial negative charges, and the hydrogen atoms in water have partial positive charges, water readily dissolves many ionic compounds by separating out the cations and the anions. Now, I explain that by saying the cations, those are things that have partial positive charges, are dissolved by water because the partially negatively charged oxygens tend to stick to the cations and bring them into solution. In contrast, anions, things that have negative charges, are able to dissolve in water because the partially positively charged hydrogens in water cluster around those anions and bring them into solution. This whole process is called solvation. Now, most molecular compounds do not separate into cations and anions in water. Now, that brings up the distinction between ionic and molecular compounds. Do you remember the difference between the two from our last chapter? If not, it'd be a good time to review your notes. Let's take a look at some examples. Sodium chloride, once again, when in its solid state, looks like a cluster of chloride anions and sodium cations, which are shown here as green and purple balls, respectively. Once a cluster of sodium chloride goes into the water, the partially negatively charged oxygen atoms in the water molecules, which are pictured here in red, cluster around the positively charged sodium cations and drag them away from the body of the solid and into solution. Similarly, the partially positively charged hydrogen atoms cluster around the negatively charged chloride atoms and also drag them away from the body of the solid and into solution. That is why sodium chloride dissolves so readily in water. Now, let's look at a molecular compound, methanol. Methanol has a formula of CH3OH. It does not have any ionic bonds, hence it does not dissolve into ions in solution. When we put methanol in water, however, it does dissolve in water, primarily because methanol has a hydrogen bond located at its OH group. Water also has many hydrogen bonds, and as a result, the hydrogen bonds in the methanol and the water get together and make them intersoluble with each other. When methanol dissolves in water, however, you'll notice that there are no cations or anions formed. 
Thus, we would say that methanol is a non-electrolyte, while sodium chloride is an electrolyte. Now, despite the fact that many ionic substances do dissolve in water, because of water's partially negatively charged oxygen atoms and its partially positively charged hydrogen atoms, there are some ionic compounds that do not. Instead of dissolving, they just sit there undissolved in solution. Now, we call such compounds precipitates. In order to predict which ionic compounds dissolve or are soluble in water and which ones don't, are insoluble in water, we have to use the solubility rules found in Table 4.1, which is this table right here. You'll note that everything in the upper half of the table describes ionic compounds that are soluble in water. So for example, if you have any kind of ionic compound that has a nitrate, nitrate having the formula NO3 minus 1, it says there are no exceptions. Thus, every single imaginable ionic compound that has nitrate as its anion is soluble in water. Down here we can see an example with iodide, for instance. It says that all compounds that have iodide as their anions are also soluble in water, except for the following. Compounds that have silver, mercury, or lead. So silver iodide, mercury iodide, and lead iodide would all be insoluble in water. Similarly, you can see this anion sulfate, SO42-. This chart tells us that all ionic compounds having sulfate as their anions are soluble in water, except for strontium sulfate, barium sulfate, mercury sulfate, and lead sulfate. I hope that makes sense. Now the bottom half of this table indicates to us which types of ionic compounds are insoluble in water. It says, for instance, that any ionic compound containing sulfide, S2-, is insoluble in water except for ammonium sulfide, any sulfide involving the alkali metals, which are the metals found in group one of the periodic table, calcium sulfide, strontium sulfide, and barium sulfide. Looking at another example, we can see phosphate, PO43 minus. Any compound that has phosphate as its anion is insoluble in water, except for ammonium phosphate, and any phosphate that has an alkali metal as its cation, keeping in mind that alkali metals are the elements found in group one of the periodic table. Do you see how this table works? If not, don't worry. It'll gradually solidify in your minds as we do some ensuing problems. Here's one of them. Using the table we just saw, predict whether each of the following compounds is soluble or insoluble in water. Now I'm going to show you just a few of these examples and let you tackle the rest on your own. Example A is magnesium bromide. So what we're going to do is look down at the table and see if we can find magnesium or bromide somewhere in it. As you can see, bromide is found right here. It says that all bromides are soluble in water except for silver bromide, mercury bromide, and lead bromide. Is magnesium bromide any of those? No, it's not. Hence, magnesium bromide is soluble in water. Example B is silver iodide. Let's see if we can find silver or iodide somewhere in this table. We look down here, we see I minus iodide, and note this table tells us that all iodide containing compounds are soluble in water except for silver iodide, mercury iodide, and lead iodide. Is silver iodide one of those? Yes, it is. Hence, silver iodide is insoluble in water. Our next example is sodium carbonate. Let's see if we can find either sodium or carbonate somewhere on here. The CO3 carbonate, which has a 2 minus charge, is found here in the lower half of the table. Hence, looking at this table, we can see that all carbonates are insoluble in water, except for carbonates that have ammonium as their cation or any alkali metal as their cation. Is sodium, shown up here, an alkali metal? Yes, it is. It's in group one of the periodic table. Hence, this is a carbonate that's an exception, and it is indeed soluble in water. Here's our last one, 
zinc acetate. You might remember this is a polyatomic anion called acetate whose formula is CH3COO-. It's found down here in the upper half of this table. Note that it says that all compounds containing acetate as their anions are soluble in water, and it makes no exception. Hence, this is soluble in water.